having dirt bury what you're working on is far from ideal. But having the walls cave in is a whole lot worse. It can result in serious injury, even death. You don't even have to be completely buried to die. A few years back, a worker died from crush syndrome after only his legs were buried under dirt and rocks. As a construction professional, you should already know how to control and prevent the risks associated with the collapse of excavation walls. Since this can have serious consequences, and there are several ways to prevent it, the collapse of trenches and excavations is considered zero tolerance. It starts with properly planning your job site. If you're not looking to shore an excavation, the walls must be cut to a particular slope. The only soil type that doesn't require a slope is solid rock, as in rock that can only be excavated using explosives. For all other soil types within 1.2 meters of the bottom, a slope of 45 degrees is generally sufficient. But sometimes, due to its composition, soil can be less stable and the slope must be less than 45 degrees. But there are other factors that can affect the stability of soil. You should also consider the depth of the excavation, the presence of groundwater, and how long the work will take. If the slope will be greater than 45 degrees, given that you can't just become a soil expert overnight, you need an engineer's plan. And you need to keep a copy of it on site at all times. Once you have the plan, you can assess how it will impact the job site. Before digging, you should always contact Info Excavation to check for the presence of underground infrastructures. Then, make sure there are no nearby obstacles that would prevent you from respecting the required slopes. If, for one reason or another, you can't respect the required slopes, the excavation will have to be short. When shoring, you must obtain plans and specifications from an engineer and follow them to a T to ensure compliance. Vehicles or materials located near an excavation place a load on the walls and vibrations can destabilize the soil. That's why vehicles and machinery must be driven or parked more than 3 meters from the top of the walls, and materials must be placed more than 1.2 meters away. Anytime someone is working in a trench, a worker must be stationed at the surface to monitor and warn them of any potential danger. You must also make sure to regularly inspect the excavation. Whether it's short or not, you must inspect the state of the walls. Weather conditions, such as rain or thaw, can change or damage the walls. You should also inspect the bottom of the excavation to ensure there's no water accumulation. If the excavation is short, you should also inspect the shoring to identify any deformations or anomalies. Needless to say, an excavation presents a fall hazard for other workers, the public, and your client. That's why you need to set up a means of protection, such as a barrier or a warning line. Being a professional is all about proper planning, because that's how you finish a job safely. And remember, APCHQ advisors are always here to help. <laughs>